everybody. Welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids, ages 10, 7, and 6. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you've come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'll be doing a flip through of Science Through Nature's Be a Naturalist curriculum written by Jennifer Watts and co-authored by Leah Adams. Now, they were gracious enough to send me a copy of this ages ago, and I just did not have a chance to review it for you. They actually have a freebie offered on their website right now for the month of September. It's like a nature guide with six different activities and adventures that your child could embark on in the month of September. So be sure to head to their website down below to download that if nothing else. I will have all the relevant links in the description box down below. If I receive a discount code for them, that information will be in the description box down below as well. One of the things I like best about Science Through Nature is that it is a secular science company. I am not um, a strict secular curriculum user. I have no problem with tweaking um, religious curricula to make it fit our needs if it's the best curricula out there or a curricula that I think will suit our family. However, with science, I am pretty strict about it. I like to stay as secular as possible. And this is an entirely secular curriculum. So it's a great place to start, especially if that's important to you. One of my favorite things about this curricula is that it is entirely secular. Now I am a secular homeschooler, but I am not, uh, strict about only sticking to secular curriculum. I am happy to tweak religious curricula if I feel like it's the best curricula for our family. However, with science curricula, I am pretty strict about it because I just don't want to go through the hassle of editing all of that information. So this is totally, totally secular. And it combines nature study with scientific concepts, which is a two for one in my opinion. When you get into the curriculum initially, there is this very clear table of contents and the projects or experiments or activities in this book are organized into different quests. Specifically, there are eight different quests and you can see that each of them has a different title. There's Let's Explore, Nature Detective, Super Senses, my Spot, The Wonder of Life, The Power of Plants, The World of Animals, and Habitats and Home. And if you look closely, you can see that within each quest are the same series of activities. You have a pre-quest prep, resources, a note to nature explorers, adventures, get involved or meet a naturalist or nature art, those kind of rotate. And then you have adventure sheets at the end, which are sort of activity pages for your student. So this curricula is an all-in-one nature study and science curricula, as mentioned and it is designed to take you through the entire year. It is geared to be towards grades two through five, but it can go up or down depending on how you tweak it. It has both indoor and outdoor activities, so it's all included for you and it really does explain for you what you need to do, what materials you need, and how to go about learning the key topics and vocabulary. It does include some art and craft projects, so if you are that type of family, it is in here for you already. In terms of a schedule, it is actually designed to be flexible. So whether you are a four day a week homeschooler or five day a week, traditional, part of a co-op, part of a cottage school, you can tweak this to fit you. Basically the time to complete the quest will vary, but most of them could take about a month, three to four weeks is what they say. One thing to note is that this curriculum is designed for spring, summer, and fall, so most of the activities are geared towards those seasons. They give you tips as to how to create this relaxed schedule. So before going into every quest, you're supposed to read through the pre-quest prep, scan through the adventures in the extension, and check out the supplemental resources. And then you spend a couple of days reading through the note to nature explorers with your child, and then have conversation about those discussion questions complete any of the sidebar activities, and then you do the adventure part over two to four weeks as fits your family. So you can do the indoor activities on the rainy days, the outdoor activities when the weather suits, and then you can finish up any extension and corresponding activities at the end of the quest as well. They list out a bunch of supplemental books that are useful for each of the different quests, and you can tweak it however you want. So for example, I tweak curricula all the time. If you have a child who likes arts and crafts, do the arts and crafts, look up more arts and crafts to add to it. If you have a child that likes to write, by all means, have them write essays and worksheets and everything. But if you have a child who doesn't and you can do things by oral discussion, just do that. They don't have to write out everything. The point with any kind of curriculum, especially science curriculum, is to cultivate a scientific mindset, to cultivate a critical way of thinking and a way of discussing and collaborating with others to form hypothesis, to realize what your observations are to express those observations and then to form conclusions. So here you have general resources 
They have different books that they suggest, like the National Geographic Guide to the National Parks of the USA or the Curious Nature Guide, the One Small Square series. We've really enjoyed those in our house. They have the Nature Connection and Outdoor Workbook for Kids. We're actually using that this year for all of us. Um, there's some pocket guide books that they recommend and field guide books. And as and I really appreciated this part, they suggest some apps, podcasts, and websites that are useful as well, like Tumble Science. The quests introduce your student to two fictional characters that will help guide them through their exploration. Those are the naturalist Kate and the wildlife biologist Nate. So as you can see here, you have Welcome to your first science quest. My name is Naturalist Kate and I love science, nature, and everything that has to do with either one. Another thing I really like about this curricula is that it focuses on experience. So by getting your kid out there, it really tries to emphasize that for science, it is all about your senses. It is all about observation. What are you touching and seeing and feeling? What are you measuring? What are you experiencing in the world around you, especially at this elementary age. So it talks about what a nature preserve is. It talks about the nature center. It talks about different animals that you might see there, how you can venture into the forest safely, um, what kinds of things you can collect, what kinds of things you can't. Um, take only pictures, leave only footprints. All of those concepts are discussed before you start your nature study. And then you have places to explore here. So it talks about map quest, all trails, the National Park Service, different resources that, that help you explore the wilderness around you. It talks about different nature play ideas, how you can visit a nature center, and then you have a nature challenge. So you can challenge your family or yourself to do something like rappelling or rock climbing or zip lining or horseback riding, kayaking, etc. Some nature adventure that gets you out there. Then they have a Meet the Naturalist page. Now, not every quest has one of these, but several of them do. And here they start off with John Muir, and then it goes on to talk about different national parks and the work he did for national parks. I like how the formatting of the pages changes. In this particular page, it shows you an example of a journal entry written by an eight-year-old. That whole first quest, as you can see, gets you prepped in the mindset of a naturalist. Like what kind of resources can you use? Where can you explore? How can you engage with nature in a way that's not simply in a studious way? The second quest is called Nature Detectives, and it goes into learning how to stock the perfect pack for outdoor expeditions, learning about how nature guides are organized, identifying wildlife, beginning an adventure journal, setting up a nook for nature treasures, becoming nature wise by discovering how to stay safe in the wild. So you can see that it definitely progresses in a logical fashion. You've learned about what types of resources and places you can explore, and now you're learning about how you can prepare before you go there to explore. So again, you have this letter from the naturalist, and it talks about different materials like binoculars, a nature collection, and this one was from Nate, the um, biologist, learning how to identify poison ivy and ticks, how it's important to always check your body for ticks. Then they have an identify it bingo, how we would do nature journaling, how you can use different like materials, like actually taping in the treasure that you find if it's two dimensional, how you can create a nature nook, what biologists actually do. So the assignment here is to research a lot, real life biologist and the type of work that they do. Um, creating a name collage. So it gives you all these different projects that you can work on as well. So I'm just gonna flip through the rest of them pretty quickly for you. Meeting another naturalist, Anna Comstock. I love that they included a female naturalist. And she is the author of The Handbook of Nature Study, which is a book that you will see often used by Charlotte Mason um, homeschoolers and you have a sensory expedition chart here. You have the pages here for your students to use. This is discovering living and non-living things, creating an imaginary living creature. And here you're talking about different kingdoms, how you can make land art, like out of rocks and natural materials. And then you're going into quest six is about plants. So again, you have the note at the beginning. You'll notice here that they have suggested stopping points in the longer discussion sections, which is a really nice little tip for parents as they're going through. Like sometimes it can be confusing when you have a long um, reading section where we should stop and break this up for the day. It talks about particular things you can notice about moss and ferns and conifers and flowering plants. 
And then you can actually create a visual to show what you know about plants. So something about, for example, photosynthesis and how that works or the different parts of a plant. If you have a younger student like stem, roots, etc. You have an experiment here to find out what happens when a leaf no longer has access to sunlight. Another experiment about the vascular structure of plants and how they actually move up their fluid um, to nourish the entire plant. Then there's a plot study helping monarchs. And you have different... Pages. Quest 7 is about animals. So it talks about different groups of animals. It talks about how you would identify what group those animals belong on. How you can do a stealthy walk instead of a normal walk in nature to see if you can sneak up on any animals. What a stakeout is like. Water animals, so amphibians. An animal sign hunt for footprints, etc. And also signs on trees, scat, etc. Here, there's a game that you can play. Be the first zoologist to round up all the animals in your animal group to win this game. So I think you have cards here, yeah, for the animal refuge roundup game. You have a diversity display, print keepsakes, live animal cams, and then there's habitat home. So I actually think, looking through this, this is an excellent, excellent introduction to nature study in a realistic and usable way. Like this sets you up for actually being a naturalist in your real life as a child, as an adult growing up. Like to understand what is it you're looking at? What is it you're looking for? How is it you're trying to learn about the natural environment around you? It goes into urban habitats, backyard habitats. And again, you have these activity cards at the end um, for the layers of habitats book that you can make. So I think this is an excellent, excellent place to start. If you, if you are confused about how to teach nature study, how to get started and actually exploring your environment, I think this does a great job of holding your hand throughout that process. As you can tell, it starts very small at the beginning, like teaching you about how to research this on your own, to figure out what's in your environment, in your own community, and then get started with how to be prepared, how to conduct yourself responsibly in the wild, and then what you should be observing. And it provides you with crafts and games and supplemental resources. Product is available as a downloadable PDF, so you would get access to it immediately upon purchase. And you can go ahead and find all the relevant links in the description box down below. I am really impressed with this. I think it's a really organic and gentle way of learning how to be a naturalist, exactly what they say, in a practical and repeatable way in a way that will stick with children in a way that incorporates both nature study and science so that you're not just drawing a feather and forgetting about why feathers matter you're doing both things you're also playing games and engaging with the materials and the environment around you so i'd like to just extend a thank you to jennifer watts and leah adams for sending me this in exchange for my honest review I am sorry that it took me so long to get out there. It is a great resource for you. If, you're if you are feeling overwhelmed or worried or unaware of what to do when you get out into the natural world with your kids, this is a great resource for you. As always, you guys, I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending some of it with me, and I wish you the very best day.